It's Mark Summers from Summers Technical Services. We're going to wind up our uh, tutorials on the RF load tray by doing an uh, assembly drawing. So here's our load tray. Double click, I'm in the configuration manager. Double click on the exploded view that we just created earlier. And we can see our exploded view. Uh, forgot to add some uh, exploded view trail lines. And the way we do that is select the uh, exploded view in the tree and click on exploded line sketch. What that will let us do is add individual line sketches to connect the different components. So I'll start putting these in here. I'll select that arc there. It's got a direction I can reverse if I need to. And then I'll select this arc down here and check it and it draws me a nice little line. Do the same thing for this one. And you just continue approving those and adding them. This will be easier to start down here at the bottom. I'll reverse the direction and then select this bottom face of that screw. And <clears throat> It'll follow the lines of the exploded direction. So if I select that arc, reverse the direction, select that face there, it follows that path along XYZ per my option there. So I can add these other ones pretty easily. Select that one, reverse it, select this bottom face. And again, it follows the XYZ path of the explode. So I'll leave that to the viewer to put the rest of those in. So I'll prove that, save the assembly, and now we'll create a new drawing using this exploded view. So I'll go File New. I think I want to desize landscape template because the uh, view will fit in there nicely at one to one scale. So once the drawing template pops up, there's the drawing that I want to use or the model I want to use. I'll go next. I'll choose an ISO view, place the view on the screen and approve that. Obviously, the scale for the sheet is too small, so I'll right-click, go to Properties on the Sheet Format, and make it a one-to-one -one scale. I don't want these little origins to show in the drawing view, so I'll go to View and turn off the origins. There we go. So it was easy to make the view. Now I'm going to make a bill of materials, which is also simple. I'll go to uh, Tables and select Bill of Materials. I'll select the view I want to create the Bill of Materials from. It's got lots of options over here. I'll use the defaults and place it over here and approve it. And I'll place it right here. Notice it pulls the part numbers and assigns the item numbers. Part numbers come from the parts themselves. Item numbers are populated depending on the options you choose. In this case, it's the order in which they're placed in the model tree. Also it gives me quantities for these parts. If I don't like the location of these columns, I can just select it, and drag it over where I want it to be. Now for balloons, I can do a auto balloon, and it'll add all the balloons for all the parts. If I do this, though, it won't let me add quantities to the balloons like I'd like to do. So I'm not going to do auto balloons. I'm going to do just single balloons. And the first balloons I'm going to add will be for the items they only have quantity one. I'll leave off the quantity checkbox. So this is item one. I'll select the part, place the balloon. 
and another quantity one, select the part, place the balloon. Continue to go around finding those single parts. Very nice. It parametrically ties the balloon numbers to the item numbers listed in the bill of materials we just placed. I think that's all my single items. Now I want to turn on quantity and I'll add the placement for the quantity on the left side. I'll place these standoffs. And this block here. Now I'll place some to the right, the quantity on the right side. Maybe these items down here. These fasteners here. Maybe these washers here. Just go around selecting the fasteners. I'll grab these and put these on the right side or left side. And these three I'll put all on the left side. There's one. There's two. There's three. Escape to get out of that. I always change my mind on these if I select one of the balloons. I want to change it to the other side. It's easy enough. And I think I've got all of them in there now. I'll prove that. And that looks like it. Now I'll notice on my bill of materials, the descriptions aren't populated except for this one here. Plus because the part doesn't have a description in there. So if I go back to my model, my assembly model, and I'll open up one of these parts from the model tree. Once that's open, I'll go to the properties. File properties. And notice that there are no properties because this is a step model I brought in. So I'll type in a property called description. It's going to be a text. And I'll type in this description. After in type and that sounds good. And then I want to go back to the drawing field to be populated. And I can do that with the rest of the parts. So other than adding a few more of these uh, trace lines and completing the drawing template, it looks like I'm finished with my RF load tray drawing. So check back often for more tutorials such as this from Summers Technical Services.